take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I'll just back up here. I just wanted to read something to you. I was going to sing it with the guitar, but, uh, for some reason I can't get my, my interface to work properly. So I'm just going to read the words to you. It says, uh, I'm not trying to find just some new frame of mind that will change my old points of view or point of view for I've been through it all and deep in side, nothing changed. I'm not new. I'm not seeking a gift or an emotional lift, but one thing I'm longing to do is to lift up my cup and let you fill it up with just you. And then the chorus, the chorus is, More of you, more of you. I've had it all, but what I need, just more of you. Of things I've had my fill, and yet I hunger still. Empty and bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. I have searched all around in the husks that abound. But I found no nourishment there. Now my strength's almost gone, and I feel the pull of despair. But my thirst drives me on as I stumble along over ground so barren and dry but the streams just ahead, living water, Lord, fill me, I cry. Then it goes back into the chorus, more of you, more of you. I've had it all, but what I need is more of you. Of things I've had my fill, and yet I hunger still. Empty and bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. Now, when I can get the interface working properly with the guitar, <clears throat> excuse me, I will uh, I will try to sing that. Praise the Lord. Continuing our our uh, series on intercession. That's what we're going to be doing today. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we appreciate you helping us in this hour. We don't have to, Lord, fall away. We don't have to even be sifted by the devil. We don't have to be taken captive by Satan, Lord, if we'll listen to your words, if we'll obey your words, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you help us to deliver this message and that your people, Lord, will have ears to hear the message so that they will not be taken captive by Satan at his will. We ask that you bless and anoint, Lord, as we minister your word at this time. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Switch that back to the regular King James from the concordance. Praise the Lord. So we begin our, our lesson in Luke chapter 
22, and beginning with verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon. Did he say it more than once? Why did he say it more than once? Why do you have to say Simon's name more than once? Obviously, Simon's not listening, right? He's not paying attention. Remember what the Lord said? He said, my sheep hear my voice. But he also said, my sheep I call by name right? And he's calling one of his sheep, but he's not listening. So he has to say his name again. Are you listening? And this cost Peter, or I should say this cost Simon, but it cost Simon Peter. This cost Peter. How many know that's why Jesus used that name uh, interchangeably for Peter? Simon Peter, because there was a mixture. Amen. When Jesus first found uh, Simon, he said, thou art Simon, but thou shalt be Cephas. Are you listening? There was a mixture there, just like there is in all of us. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. You see how the Lord is addressing uh, Simon right now? It's, It's like this. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, because he's, he's trying to get his attention. Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Are you listening, people? He's trying to get his attention. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Jesus is telling Peter that he has prayed for him. He has interceded for him. He has entreated on his behalf. Are you listening? It's very important for us to understand that the Lord intercedes for us. Amen, that he prays for us. Simon Peter did not have to be sifted by Satan. He didn't have to be uh, taken captive by Satan, but he wouldn't listen. But the overall message I'd like you to get from this is that Jesus prayed for him. Makes a big difference. Makes a big difference. Who's praying for you? Amen? A lot of times we'll ask someone to pray for us, and you don't know if they're going to pray for you. Are you listening? but the Lord will intercede for you on your behalf. Go to him, seek him, and he will pray to the Father on your behalf. He'll intercede for you as he said he would. He said there'll come a time when you won't have to go through me anymore. You can ask the Father yourself. Are you listening? Obviously, he's talking about in the kingdom, right? He's not talking about here, because we're going to constantly have to go through Jesus on this earth. But how many know there's going to come a time when we'll be with the Father? Amen? You won't have to ask the Father in Jesus' name anymore. You'll be able to ask the Father himself. Praise the Lord. What I want you to take away from this message, I want you to understand is the sifting that Simon Peter went through without question was fear. It was fear, as it is for all of us. 
So let's go to Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Now, this is something Jesus had said to all the disciples, but he said this to Simon Peter as well. And if he would have listened, if he would have paid attention, then he would not have denied the Lord, right? Jesus said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. You can see how this applies to Simon Peter. He didn't deny himself, right? Notice what Jesus says here in verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and his father's and of the holy angels. Without question, Simon Peter was guilty of this, ashamed of the Lord, denied that he even knew him. Amen. And you and I can fall into the same, into the same situation. We can also fi find ourselves, because of fear, denying that we even know the Lord. Are you listening? You don't be like Simon Peter and say, far be it from me. I will never deny the Lord. Don't do that. When you think you stand, right? Take heed lest you, when you think you stand, lest you fall. Don't be like Simon Peter with that attitude. I will never deny him. Don't let that be your stand. Make sure that you're standing on the rock. Make sure you're standing because of his word, not because of your understanding or not because uh, of, of your strength. <clears throat> Simon Peter did not understand what was in him. He didn't understand what he was made of. He didn't realize how vacillating he really was or how double-minded he really was. He didn't realize how insecure he really was until he was tested, right? He was trusting in himself until the trial, until the test that he went through. He realized how just how weak he really is. He realized just how frail he really is. Amen? Galatians. Now, Jesus has said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, right? Take up his own cross daily. He that seeks to save his life will lose it. Listen. This is Paul the Apostle. I am crucified with Christ. Now, it's a big difference between taking up your cross and being crucified with Christ. How many know that? It's a reproach just to take up your cross, right? In the eyes of the world, it's, it's you know, just to, just to carry your cross will bring reproach. But there comes a time when you don't just carry your cross, but like Jesus Christ, you're crucified. A lot of God's people are still carrying their cross, and there are those that don't even carry the cross because they're ashamed of the Lord. <clears throat> but we're supposed to come to the place where we are crucified on that cross, crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, Yet not I, right, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I 
live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now, if Simon Peter had taken up his cross and been crucified with Christ, he never would have denied him. Are you listening? It's not enough just to take up your cross. You've got to be crucified on it, right? By faith. This is through faith. Jesus shows us how to do it, doesn't he? He opened not his mouth. He laid down his life. Amen? He did not rival when he was rivaled. He did not rival back, right? He did not fight his own battles. It's one thing to take up your cross. It's a whole nother thing to be crucified with Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 24. Meekness, is that, no, oh, that next, next verse. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Amen. They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Do you see why Simon Peter denied he knew the Lord? Do you see why he was sifted as wheat? Why Satan took him captive? Because he wasn't crucified with Christ. Right? He wasn't denying himself. He wasn't taking up his cross, and he wasn't crucified with Christ. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Anybody listening? All their lifetime subject to bondage, to slavery, to the mentality of slavery because of the fear of death. This is what Simon Peter was dealing with. This is what God was sifting him for, to get the fear out of him, to get that fear of death out of him. Are you listening? That's why he denied the Lord. That's why he was afraid. Because of the fear of death. That's why he shrunk back, folks. Amen. Now, there is a way to be delivered of fear. I may know that. So, yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Paul the Apostle is speaking to Timothy. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Now notice, just like Simon Peter was ashamed of Jesus, we see that the spirit of fear is correlated again with being ashamed. But it's not Jesus this time. Now it's Paul the Apostle. It's Timothy. Timothy like Peter, is dealing with the fear of death. And Paul is saying to young Timothy, be thou therefore, or be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord and of me, his prisoner. So it was even Jesus that Timothy was ashamed of to some degree because of the fear of death. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker 
of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Are you listening, people? This, this is how Simon Peter was sifted. He was sifted through fear because he wouldn't receive God's word. Now, you can choose to go the way of fear, the fear of death, and fear will sift you. Are you listening? Fear has torment. It has punishment, folks. Just because you're sifted doesn't mean you'll be, you'll be his. The whole world's going to be sifted. I may know that. But not everyone is going to be uh, brought into his garner. Not everyone's going to be safe. Just because Satan sifts you doesn't mean that you're the Lord's. Remember what Jesus said to Simon Peter? When you're converted, strengthen your brethren. I've prayed for you that your faith does not fail. Amen? Just because you're sifted, just because you're afraid, just because you're scared, just because you're ashamed of the Lord does not mean that you are even in his will. Are you listening? I mean, no, Simon Peter was very close to being cut off. He was right going in the very steps of Judas to some degree. But the Lord spared him. He prayed for him. Are you listening? <clears throat> very important, folks. Very important. So God has not given us the spirit of fear. So where does that come from? Well, obviously, it comes from Satan, right? The spirit of fear. It's a spirit. And it attacks God's people, right? It will go after anyone. Fear will devour you. Amen? Satan doesn't have any teeth, but he'll roar. And that's what he did. With Simon Peter, he roared that night when Jesus was arrested and all the disciples ran for their lives. But how many know there's coming a time when the lion of the tribe of Judah is going to roar and Satan is going to be destroyed? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Satan is like a lion and he roars. And he tries to paralyze his prey before he devours it. Amen? But there's coming a time when the lion of the tribe of Judah will have the last word. And Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he said to Peter, Simon Peter, he said, I pray for you. I pray that your faith would not fail. He interceded. He prayed, he interceded. I looked that Greek word up. It has to do with begging. He begged the Father on Simon Peter's behalf. Are you listening? It means to bind oneself. Are you listening, people? To bind oneself. That's what it means, to intercede. Jesus Christ bound himself to Simon Peter. In other words, I'm not letting you go. Not too long ago, the Lord spoke that to me. He said, I'm not going to let you go. Folks, if you don't want the Lord to let go of you, he won't. But how many know there are those that scream, kick, right? Those that are trying to get out of his hand. Those that are trying to get away from him. And he will let you if you're determined to leave him. But if you don't want to leave the Lord, he will not let you go. Praise the Lord. And that's what he was saying to Simon Peter. Satan has desired to have you, but I'm not letting you go. I'm not going to let you be destroyed. And when you are strengthened, 
or when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. In other words, when you come back to me, I'll let you stray away a little ways, but you're not going to get away from me, Simon Peter. I got a hold of you. Amen. I'm going to pull you back. Praise the Lord, people. Praise the Lord. So it was fear. That's what was causing him to shrink back. That's what was causing him to be, uh, to deny Jesus. And that's what we see with Timothy and Paul. Timothy is ashamed. He's dealing with fear, as we all do, right? Praise the Lord. Look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love. Remember what Jesus said to Simon Peter? Do you love me? Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep, right? There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. And that word torment in the Greek has to do with punishment. Satan was punishing. He was beating on Simon Peter. Are you listening? Through fear. Nothing will torment you. Nothing will sift you like fear. But there is a better way to be sifted and being purged. Amen. And that's through the truth. The Lord's going to sift the grains. Amen. Going to separate the, ch- the chaff from the wheat. But he's also going to separate the chaff from the barley. He's going to gather his barley and his wheat into his garner. Amen. How many know it's harvest time? Oh, yeah. First of the first fruits is going to be gathered in first. Amen. Then the first fruits. And then at the end of the harvest, the wheat, the figs, and the grapes. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. It's harvest time, people. We're at the beginning of the harvest. We're at the beginning of of the harvest. First of the first fruits has got to be offered up to the Lord first. Amen. And then the harvest can begin. So until the bride is taken, the, the harvest can't begin. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> we love him. Verse 19, we love him. Why? Because he first loved us. Folks, let me tell you something. If you start basing your relationship with the Lord on how much you love him, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. If you base your success based on how much you love the Lord, you're going to fail. Just like Simon Peter. That's why Jesus asked him, do you love me? And that's why he asked him three times. Because he wanted Simon Peter to know his love. He wanted him to know the difference between human love and God's love. Are you listening? And that's what God is doing in our lives, that we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Amen. Praise the Lord. Perfect love casteth out fear. You and I are no different than Simon Peter if we don't let God's perfect love Deliver us fully and completely. And how are we going to experience that? We got to know he loves us. Paul the Apostle said, I'm persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. 
Amen. He became secure in the love of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. James chapter 2. Now, folks, listen, these messages are not exhaustive. You can go back and study this yourself. I think a lot of times folks think, okay, well, Brother Joseph's done with that verse. Well, we'll no, you can go back and read. You can go back and study. You can go back, amen, and, and, and get more than even Brother Joseph got. Amen. We got to quit being lazy, brothers and sisters. We got to be diligent. Amen. Seek the Lord diligently. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. Did you know that when you are listening to this broadcast that you're entering into another man's labors? Oh, yeah. You're benefiting from another man's labor. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you don't want to stay there. Amen? You got to do some labor. You got to do some work. Amen? You got to do some digging. You got to do some studying. You can't make it in on my coattails. You can't make it in, amen, on my anointing. Praise the Lord. You're going to have to do some study in yourself. You're going to have to seek the Lord yourself. And that's all we do in this ministry, trying to inspire you to do the same. Follow me as I follow Christ. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hearken, my beloved brethren, Hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? Do you know who's saying this, folks? Does anybody know who's saying this? This is James, right? This is James, and he's saying God has chosen the poor of this world rich in faith. Amen? How many know that's what overcomes the world, even our faith? Are you wealthy in faith? Because that's what Jesus said to Simon Peter. I prayed for you that your faith does not fail. Praise God. We've got to be rich, brothers and sisters, in faith. Now, I want you to see the results of Jesus Christ's prayer. The result of his intercession. Take a look. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now, this is the one he prayed for. This is the one that he said, I prayed for you. That when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Listen, folks, this is not Simon anymore. Who seeing Peter, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Are you listening? He leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. 
and all the people saw him walking and praising God. This is the one that said, I don't know the man. This is the one that shrunk back. This is the one that went through that fiery trial, brothers and sisters. Are you listening to this preacher? Jesus said, I prayed for you. I prayed for you, Simon Peter. I prayed for you. Oh, praise God. I prayed for you. I prayed for you. That your faith doesn't fail. Oh, yeah? Your flesh is going to be sifted. Going to separate that carnal nature. Going to separate that flesh. Going to separate that chaff. Amen? From the substance. All that's going to be left to you when I'm done, Simon Peter, is all you're going to have is faith. All you're going to have left is faith. You're not going to lean on your own understanding quite as much as you used to. And you're not going to be afraid and scared. Amen? On the day of Pentecost, he stood up, wasn't afraid of the Pharisees, wasn't afraid of those that may have come to arrest him like he was the night Jesus was arrested. Men and brethren, amen, I want you to know, praise God, you crucified the Lord. You crucified him. He wasn't afraid. The same Jesus whom you crucified. Dear God, brothers and sisters, he wasn't afraid anymore. Amen. He wasn't shrinking back anymore. 3,000 souls came to the Lord when Peter preached after being sifted. Anybody listening? 3,000 souls were added to the Lord, added to the church. After Simon Peter had been purged, after he had been put through the fire. Amen. Oh, yeah, God changed him. And now we see him with John. Silver and gold have I none. I'm not rich in this world. Silver and gold have I none. Are you listening? James says, God has chose the poor of this world, rich in faith. Now listen to Peter, not Simon, Peter, not Simon, not Simon, folks, but this is Peter. Listen to him in his first epistle. Listen to him in his first epistle. <clears throat> first Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Listen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time wherein you greatly rejoice, listen, though now for a season, does, Simon, does, does Peter know what it is to experience what he's talking about? Though now for a season, if need be, doesn't have to be that way, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Now Jesus said, pray that you not enter into temptation. But how many know there are some, like Simon Peter, that choose to go the other way? And they're going to be sifted all right, but they're going to be sifted by the devil. Anybody listening? 
A lot of folks choose to go that, that route, to be sifted of the devil. If need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. This is not God's choice. I may know the Lord would rather you be tested by his word and obey his word and be changed because of the word, purified because of the word or sanctified because of the word than to go through manifold temptations. Anybody listening? That the trial of your faith, does Peter know what he's talking about, folks? Oh, yeah. Being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Are you listening, people? Whom, having not seen, you love, in whom, though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. This is what I want you to see. Peter is saying this after his fiery trial. Receiving the outcome or the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Amen. Peter knows what he's talking about. He's saying, I went through it. I was sifted as wheat. He says, I've been through the fire. But look at him now. Look at him now, brothers and sisters. Glory to the Lamb. Now let's look at his second epistle. Simon Peter. Are you listening, people? Do you think that he was being double-minded? Do you think that he was going back? Simon Peter. You got to remember, he actually began to go back under the law. He started saying you had to be circumcised. He constantly was dealing with a mixture. One, the first letter, he says he is Peter, an apostle. But now he's calling himself Simon Peter again. A servant. And an apostle. Well, which is it? Which is it, Simon Peter? Is it Peter or is it Simon? Is it a servant or is it an apostle? Oh, yeah, in this life, you're going to be a servant of all. But he was struggling even after many years. And this is his second epistle. He's still being changed. He's still being transformed. Are you listening? Paul the apostle had to withstand him to the face. Had to rebuke him. Because he was afraid. And he started to get the men going back under the law to keep the tradition, circumcision in the flesh. But look at down towards the end. Let's look at the end of this epistle. I want you to listen to Peter or Simon Peter. Did he ever get delivered of that Simon? Did he ever get free of that fully, completely free? Did he always have that mixture? My pastor said that he was like an eagle that was caught in a snare. He was never able to soar. Are you listening, people? So let's read the last part of Peter's epistle. This last epistle he wrote. This second epistle, beloved, I write unto you. In both I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy apostles, or prophets, excuse me, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of our Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts 
and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. This they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now this is the one that was sifted as wheat, folks. This is the one Jesus prayed for saying these things. This is the one Jesus said, your faith will not fail. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with the water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief, in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Listen. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. This is the one that rebuked him. This is the one that stood him to the face. Listen to what he's saying, folks. He appreciated Paul the Apostle rebuking him, getting him back on track and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved Paul, brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Anybody listening? Peter is endorsing, and he's promoting Paul the Apostle's ministry because Paul's ministry helped him. Because Paul's testimony helped him. Anybody listening? As also in all his epistles. This is, this is Peter speaking of Paul the Apostle. As also in all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things. In which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Listen to the last very words of this great apostle that Jesus said, I have prayed for you. Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Is that all Jesus said to him when he he spoke to him? No. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith does not fail. Here he is the one Jesus prayed for. Yes, he had a mixture. Yes, he constantly was going through a purging process. 
But look at what he says in his last epistle at the end of his letter. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, beware. Are you listening? He's giving warning. Beware, lest you also being led away. Dear God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Being led away with the era of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about, people. Shouldn't we listen? Shouldn't we listen? Shouldn't we take heed? This is what Peter learned. This is what he learned. But grow in grace. Grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. The last words, the last letter from Peter. He's warning. He's giving a warning. Beware, lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. Shouldn't we listen? Shouldn't we listen, people? This is the one that Paul the Apostle would stood to the face, rebuked him because he was afraid. Anybody listening? He was afraid, still dealing with fear. Shrinking back, more afraid of what man had to think of him, what what man had to say of him, more afraid for his life. So he says, okay, let's go, let's go back to circumcising the flesh again. Now, I understand being in the Holy Ghost why Paul the Apostle was so angry with Simon, Peter. Are you listening, people? Just because he prays for you, just because the Lord prayed for you, doesn't mean you're ever going to fully come to perfection. Amen? Simon Peter didn't. Not that we can read. We don't see that he ever attained to perfection. We don't see it. It's not in the Scripture. In fact, this last epistle, he calls himself Simon again. Amen? But the Lord said to him that overcometh, will I give a white stone? And he said, a new name will be written on that stone. You are to be that stone, a living stone. Are you listening, people? With a new name, a new nature. Amen. Saul became Paul. How many times do you see Paul using his name interchangeably. I don't see him calling himself Saul, except when he shares his testimony when he met the Lord on the road of Damascus. When the Lord said, Saul, Saul. But Paul never referred to himself as Saul again. Anybody listening? He's the one that said, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He's the one that said, forgetting those things which are behind, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I'm forgetting Saul. I'm forgetting who I used to be. I'm forgetting what I did. It's all washed in the blood. It's all under the blood. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm an an overcomer. Hallelujah to God. Don't let people make you live in your past, people. 
Just recently, I've had this happen to me. People want to continue to bring up my past, who I used to be. Are you listening? We all have a past. But God doesn't look at our past. It's washed in the blood. It's sad that folks still see us for who we used to be. And they can't see us for who we are today. And more importantly, that they can't see him. Amen. Dear God, did you know his mercies are new every morning? Don't ever look at somebody the next day after you have dealt with them the day before and expect them to be the way they were the day before, especially God's people. Amen? Every day is new. Every single day, his mercy is new for you and for those around you. You don't know what a new day may bring. Amen? You don't know. I don't know. Praise God. We've got to live one day at a time, brothers and sisters. Don't go beyond one day because Jesus said it's evil. Paul, I mean, Peter's the one that's saying a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day to the Lord. He's long-suffering, people. We better stop looking at dates and time. And I guess I got to stop looking at these things because I've been looking at some of those things. And just be faithful. Be ready. Amen? Be ready. Let the Lord help us to make ourselves ready. We can't afford to be looking at signs and wonders and time. and No, No, we need to let the Lord make us free. He said, follow me and I'll make you free. I'll make you free if you let me. He is speaking, people. Don't choose the fiery trials. Don't choose the manifold temptations. Don't choose to be sifted as wheat by Satan. Listen to his words. Receive his words. Let his words sanctify you. Let the truth make you free. God bless you. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Be defeated. We've got the power.